Yeah. So. All right. We're on there. We're on there. All right. You good? Yeah. No need to miss. All right. All right. Hello and welcome to More with Stumpo with me, the host, Matt Stumpo. Today, my special guest, who I'm very excited that I have on finally, is Jay Hart. Jay, say hi. Hi, folks. How you doing? <laughs> so Jay is a friend of a friend of mine, and that's how I met him. And uh, ever since I met him from day one, I've really liked him. He loves to talk, which I love to listen <laughs> sometimes. And he's got a lot of great information. He knows a lot about uh, local politics and even uh, co- co- politics of our country. So he's a great guy to listen to for information. But uh, I'm excited to have you on today, bud. Thanks. I'm excited yeah. to be here. Yeah. So yeah. this will be fun. So, Jay, go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself. What do you do for a living? And uh, then after that, why did you move to Greenwood? Okay. Um, well, for the last uh, couple decades, I, I've been in the motors, in the antique motorsports uh, business for um, the last couple of decades. Uh, and my focus, my specialty, my expertise is um, motorcycles, antique motorcycles. 1936 to 1947, Harley Davidson. Um, I cut my teeth over on Gasoline Alley doing um, everything from custom motorcycles, custom car parts to uh, vintage Indy cars. Learned from the best fabricators in the world and um, just had a deep passion for it and geographical luck. I'm in Indianapolis, the racing capital of the world with the, the greatest fabricators. So I started over there and um, just fell in love with antique motorcycles. That's what I do today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So like what, what are the year models or what, what antique motorcycle do you specifically work on? Most of what I do is, the, is, is pre-war Harley. Mm-hmm. Um, even you can narrow it down even further to mostly 1936 to 1939 um, is a lot of what I do but but 36 to 47 8 is really my specialty so I I do some of the later models as well like it's hard to believe like to talk about a 1948 as a late model motorcycle but in my world it's it's the late model. That's really cool. So, um, so what made you want to move to Greenwood? I know you're from. You lived in Broad Ripple for a little while, correct? I, and I grew up in Greenwood. I grew up in Frankfort, Indiana. Um, very unfortunate childhood. It's a very long story. It's that, that'll it's, be another podcast. It's fun to tell. Yeah, yeah, as you know, we've talked a little yeah, bit about my yeah. childhood. It's it's fun. It's a fun story to tell. You know, shape me, made me who it's I am. It's an incredible but, story. It's but uh, yeah, I made it. Um, I've lived. You know, uh, different places. Nashville, Tennessee, several times. Mm-hmm. Austin, Texas. I've been around the country a lot. Uh, did, you know, I did some television shows in the motorcycle world mm-hmm. and spent a lot of time traveling the country. And what was that show called? It was Biker Build or Bike Build? Or? I did a, a show called Biker Build Off, which was on Discovery oh, Channel and TLC. And then I did a, another show called um, Ride On that was on uh, Speed, uh, Speed Channel. Was this Speed Network? Before or after your music career? Um, my music career has been speckled about, I've really had very little of a music career. I worked okay. in management and I, I, uh, helped, um, start the Tennessee recording company in Nashville, Tennessee with That's really um, cool. my buddy Kyle music Cook channel. and, and, uh, Mike and Ben. Yeah, it was a great experience and it was something that, um, I realized, um, the partnership, like I love the guys, you know, but like mm-hmm. the partnership wasn't perfect for me. And I think that, uh, you know, there was just a better I, I was still in love with motorcycles, really. I mean, that's really what it was. So, mm-hmm. And I've always, m- antique motorcycles, I, I've always gone back to those two-wheel projects. It's just something I'm incredibly passionate about and saving things from the past. And That's really yeah. awesome. I, I, I love our country. I just love love the history. I love where we came from. Mm-hmm. I, um, I'm worried about where we're going, too. But, like, yeah. we've come from a wonderful, just amazing place. I mean, this country's magical. Um it's been magical. The setup that we have here, the combination of, um, you know, uh, God uh, blessing us with this with this opportunity to enlighten the world, mm-hmm. not just not just our country, but the world. And I think He's chosen us to lead. And um, I mean, clearly, I'm an exceptionalist. I believe in except- American exceptionalism. Yeah. And um, you know, it's I think our history, our past tells that story i think sometimes it's it's uh, uh i think it's it's skewed purposely i think it's uh you know uh we run off the rails sometimes i think when we talk about our our, our past you know we're not the country of slavery we're the country who ended slavery yes. um slavery came here from other nations it came here you know from the nations we left you know 
Spain and Italy and you know England. There's all, all of these, all of those, uh, uh, all those, those countries that don't have freedom of speech. Exactly. We're Nobody's the only country. We're the only country in the world that has freedom of speech. Yeah. Or, or we have the freest speech. We, yes, we do the have freest the freest speech, speech yeah. now. Other people started, say they have free yes. speech, but yeah. yeah. But those countries, like you know, nobody's asking you know England and France to change their flag of slavery and things like that. Yeah. You know, like. Um, but people forget that we mm-hmm. we didn't start slavery. We ended it. Our country mm-hmm. did. We're the United States. You know, we we became a new country yes. in 1970, 1776. We became a new country, a new nation, a new people. Because if you don't recall, we we didn't like those people the way they were doing business. So and we, we left for, we for much less too. What's that? We left for much less than what they're doing. A lot of them are doing now. Oh, from what, from what I was. I was yeah. watching a historian talk about it, and he explained the reasons why we left with the taxation. Yeah. And I can't remember the couple other things. I probably should study yeah. up on that part. Yeah. But I well, we had a ex- contract. We had a contract yes. in Europe. We had the Magna Carta. We had a yes. We had a contract. Yeah, we about that. And they were not. It, it didn't apply to people who were in the colonies. It was Correct. the problem. And, and so when he talked about that, he said the people that were in the, the in the in England they left England. And started America for much less than what's going on right now. What the issues are in America? Yes. And to me, I just sat there and thought about that. I was like, "That's kind of insane." Yeah. To to think that we left another country for less than what's happening right now. Yeah. For all and, the issues that's going and, on. and that happened that happened on this land. You know, mm-hmm. this was England. So it happened on on this land. You know, Back it in was Pocahontas days. Yeah, yeah. When we, John Smith came over and yeah, yeah. The yeah we don't talk about over. that as if it's a civil war. It's a revolution. It was a civil war. We, yeah. you know, we had we had the same thing that we had during the civil war, and quite frankly, the same thing we have today. Yeah, going sad. on. So we have the, the division. Let's talk about the division in yeah. in America with what the media is trying to. I know we, uh, I know we're jumping right into politics real quick. Which I mean, I'm good with it. Um, so yeah, what I'm trying to be during this conversation is more of a mediator. I'm not going to be an instigator on anything. So I just want to ask the questions. Do your best. I know you. I'll do so the I, best. I, I know. Yeah. I'll do, do your best. And anybody who follows me on Facebook understands where I'm at. Yeah. Uh, I, I love free speech. I want anybody to be able to say whatever they want. Yeah. So that's why you're here. And then right. hopefully I can get a Democrat on or a, yeah. a far leftist. That'd be great. Sure. But anyway, so what do you think or how good of a role does the media play in – Doing what they should be doing, providing providing the news, providing what's going on that's good or bad, or do you think they're divisive, or do you think that they try to push a narrative? What, what oh, do you I think honestly think? I think it's absolutely. I mean, it's, I think it's clear to anyone that there's a narrative being pushed by media, and I think you could you can combine media along with you know big tech. I think that's I think what we have is very clear. You have you have big tech and the media who desperately need politicians to protect them. And allow them to kind of run mm-hmm. wild do what they're doing. And we have politicians who really need big tech in the media. And we've convinced ourselves that we need big tech. We don't, but we've convinced right. ourselves we need big tech. We've also convinced ourselves that we need these politicians. We need some politicians. We It's practical to send somebody to Washington and say, hey, listen, here's what we say. Go over there and tell them what we said. And mm-hmm. then come back. And th- that's their job. It's their only job. Like it's, a public servant. Yeah, that's like, it. That's what they're supposed to be oh. as a public servant. Oh, Really? I mean, yeah. you would know that today, you know? Yeah, you would. Because you would today, that, yeah. we're serving them. You know, mm-hmm. we, we serve them once they get, the, when they get there. But that's the thing. Big tech needs government. Government needs big tech. Nobody needs us. Like, we've convinced ourselves we need big tech. They, they do need us, but they've... Well, we're the customers. They're now in a position yeah, where they the, control us. Of it. So there's no, like, real need. It's, you know, they have us hooked. So, like... It, it's 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 different now. It's the, they're not trying to serve us something that's that's delightful, you know. They they have us, so you know we're caught in that. So media, th- there's no you know it's all money, it's all power, and the the and and honestly, so big tech media, and uh, our wa- certainly our Washington politicians and many of our state politicians are all woven together. We don't we can't see where one stops and the other starts now. Now, what do you begins. What do you think of now? There's got to be some politicians out there that, like, I think, like, as Ted Cruz, I think Ted Cruz does a really good job with sure. with separating with separating the establishment re- Republicans versus yeah. everyone else inside there. But what he, I think, he does a great job with media. I think he does a good job with with the big tech. 
the, yeah. the recent bill that he was trying to push and then also going to court against big tech yeah. and talking to them about it. I, I can't remember. Uh, Jim Jordan, I believe, yeah. was in part of it. Matt Gates, yeah, was a part of that as well. Yeah. What about those kinds of guys? Um, our president. I mean, oddly our, enough, our president. Yeah. I want to back up just a minute. Though. I'm not a big fan of the of the term establishment Republicans, even though. There certainly are people who are established there. They're, when you're there for 30 years, yes, you're established. I mean, yeah, that's, those are the ones I mean, it's a definition. About, that's yeah. by definition, that's what they are. They're establishments. But um, people be, people become establishment Republicans overnight. Sometimes it's mm-hmm. really the, the the power, the control, the elitism that that you have once you're in that seat. Mm-hmm. That and, and it's that that self preservation that people are trying to hold on to because. It's become so widely accepted to allow people, you know, to uh, to do those things. But Lindsey Graham said the other day, he said, um, you know, basically what he was saying, he was talking about the uh, the uh, uh, in the bill, the, uh, the the 230 section, what we're talking about with big tech. Mm-hmm. He was saying, you know, hey, somebody should really do something about this. Like, well, the the, the president tried to yeah. and you just stabbed him in the back. Yeah. They have, you know, well, so, like, so my biggest you know, thing, uh, sorry to interrupt you yeah. and cut you off. The biggest thing for me that was so upsetting, just because re- in the, as of recent years, I've been watching a lot of uh, YouTube and I watch a lot of the just private media. And I don't have, I have a Twitter. I'm not very active on it, but seeing mm. a lot of the suppression that happens on Twitter and a lot on YouTube. One sure. of the shows that I watch is called Ladder with Crowder. Oh, We've yeah, talked about great. that show. Sure. They have been attacked. I was told that I was booked for. Crowder and I showed up and oh and it's, it's me it's Matt yeah. it's uh it's definitely not no. <laughs> it's the, yeah no I wish uh but when they get attacked on the smallest of things and then Dis- Disney came after them sure. Google went after them yeah. Apple went after them Russia has even yeah. gone after them yeah and the people in government I don't care if they're Republican or Democrat they have been doing little to nothing the past four years. That's what I've seen, and then I've listened to Stephen Crowder talking about it. He said, "What is what? Are, who? What are our representatives in government doing to stop this? They're to not doing anything us. to protect them, and they're because not we doing do, anything." Yeah, because but we Trump do has been on Twitter, of course, saying stuff like, "Hey, they're trying yeah. to censor us," but nothing gets go. Nothing happens in Congress. Nothing happens even in the House that gets brought no, up about no. it, which is which is why I get upset about it, and I get mad at Republicans. I get mad at Democrats for it. Yeah. So, because, like I said, they, they need each other. They, they yes, they, they definitely need each, need each other. other. And what they're, they're afraid do to do is to step up against big yeah. media and say, yeah. "No, you can't do that." Yeah. If you're you're either going to be a platform or you're going to be a publisher. Yeah. Well, they 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 don't want to be a publisher because then they got rules. Sure. They want to be a platform so then they can make the rules. So yeah, they, that was my little rant on it. That was my little rant. No, but that's right. That's yeah. a, that's that's absolutely right. They they um, there's no, there's no competition in it. There's no competition. No, we have a very, very small group of people, you know, um, and right now we're hearing a lot of like, you know, re- a lot of Republicans are boo Republicans. Well, Republicans are we're a platform. That's what makes you a Republican. Not some, not a few people in Washington. I mean, there are millions and millions and millions and millions of Republicans, and we're talking about a, a, a very, very small speck of those people who are in control that are kind of taken off their own direction and because nobody votes in a primary they get to stay there quite often mm-hmm. people don't realize how important these primary elections They're are so they get to stay there for a long time but it's a very small group of register uh, or of republican politicians that people are angry with but we can't throw the whole party away the way to fix the party is get involved in the party exactly show up vote get involved in your local uh can you explain parties. primaries to, yeah. to people who, let's say okay. these are some new voters that we're having sure. that's listening on. And know, there's not a ton of people that listen to this, which you really yeah. should. I think it's great. I do I do a fantastic, truly fantastic job. <laughs> but if you great. Can, thank you. Uh, <laughs> that's really good. Uh, I've been trying. That. I've been practicing. you got to ask that's, my family. I call. I talk to them all the time like that. That is really good. Um, you need to do my answer machine. Oh, dude. If I don't have hilarious. an answer machine, I guess well, it's no, like your phone. voicemail. Yeah. yeah. I could try it sometime. I don't know if anyone has but answer keep, machines anymore. Uh, old people. I'm ready to have an answer machine. <laughs> I'd rather. I'm done one. with the phone. I mean, after what we're talking yeah. about, like it makes me want to just get rid of my phone altogether. Like well, everything we're doing here and all this service that we're using, yeah. you know, there's no competition. It's all controlled by a very small group of people who are on one side, which is the side of the globe. Yeah. And also, if you don't really believe what he's saying or what I'm saying, 
please look this up yourself. You can look up all this information and deduce whatever whatever thought comes to your head. Or not, because it. it's already or censored. Not, or, yeah, or it's not, already or it's already done. censored. But the stuff I've been following, there is a lot of censorship going on. Sure. But anyway, so like, let's explain to people who might be new voters or getting into voting recently, yeah. you know, what what is a primary? What 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 is the vote? Why do I need to vote in a primary? Why do I need to go and vote? You know, every two years, every four years. Can you explain yeah. to them what why it's important to do that? For, for most elections, the primary election is really it's really the mo- the chance you get to decide a real difference between candidates. That's where the real difference happens mm-hmm. because after the primary, people come together. But the primary is where each party decides basically who's going to run for their party. Who's, so rep- best re- who's going to rep- run for their party? Represent them. Yes, who's yeah. going to represent their party in the election. So you have an election to have an election. Mm-hmm. So Republican primary will um, decide early on um, in, in, the, in the election, only Republicans will be running. And so only Republicans can show up. Some states allow um, only Republicans can vote in a Republican primary. Sometimes Republicans vote can vote in the Democrat primary to decide which Democrat's going to run. So we had a thing in our state back, Rush, well, not in our state, across the country, in many states where you could vote, where Republicans could, could vote in the Democrat election, where Rush Limbaugh did this thing. And uh, I'm a big Rush fan. I couldn't we tell. Could, yeah. We <laughs> almost spent a lot of time talking about the shirt, but this is the first, as, to my knowledge, and with other super fans, we have found, this is the very first run of Rush Limbaugh shirts. Now, I, I could That's be awesome. wrong, but... Working with other super fans, I think we have found that, and I found this shirt. I'm so proud of it. It was a, it was NOS, New Old Stock. Hey. So, but Rush had a thing yeah. called Operation Chaos back when Obama and Hillary were running against each other, mm-hmm. and so we had everybody go out, you know, and and vote for you know, you know, a party mm-hmm. or, or a, someone in the Democrat Party. So I can tell people, yes, I voted in a Democrat primary. <laughs> I did, and uh, there was absolutely. No good intention. Well, there was good intention. It was to make certain that they lost. <laughs> it didn't work. Yeah, there's, there's because they didn't lot. lose. No, that's there was a long story short. There is a lot that is involved in politics, even on the small scale, sure. even on the state level. Oh boy, the local city, level. city, city, city government. Level. City government is is that is that is where you have the most power. And it's the government that will affect you the most and the and the quickest. The quickest. It, it, it will affect you the quickest. Everybody knows me knows that I talk about this thing called TIF. 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 Yes. Tax increment financing. I, I talk about it all the time. That's that is something that is a it is a monster sweeping across our nation. Mm-hmm. It was for good intentions, and in fact, it, it's a wonderful tool when it's used properly by good people. It's a wonderful tool, and municipalities can can. Uh, could find some great success with that, and some have. The problem is the, the length of. I don't know how much time we have to talk about TIF, but it's, we got a it's, couple minutes. <laughs> it's very complicated, but it's almost like flipping a house. If you understand how flipping a house works, but you're flipping an entire section of a city. Mm-hmm. And what we're saying is, and this is look. There's a lot of details to this. There's a lot of there's a lot of rules. To each state has different rules, but basically, if you take a blighted area. That is, let's say that just like the assessed value is $20 million. Blighted meaning. Blighted meaning. (laughs) Because I'm not very smart. Okay. Well, there's a, there's a. Is it like an eyesore? There's an actual definition that Indiana uses. I can't recall the exact definition, but it's basically, I mean, it's, it's, um, it's, it's an area that just would not be developed. It wouldn't happen without this tool, essentially. So if it's an area that's really bad. Which I, I want to go ahead and say right now, no cities hardly ever adhere to this rule mm. because badly damaged or deteriorated. Yeah, condition. badly That's damaged. one of the defin- yeah. definitions from Merriam Dictionary. Sure, sure. I mean, I could show you. Yeah, I could show you TIF districts in Greenwood. You would not say they're badly damaged or deteriorated, mm-hmm. and and if they were, we haven't fixed the things that were bad, badly damaged or deteriorated with mm-hmm. TIF. But we're basically borrowing money from the future, municipal bonds. And we're 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 investing it. Oh, it hurts me to say that because it's a terrible investment most of the time. Most of the time. Not all the time, okay. but most of the time. So we are supposed to be investing it in the area to redevelop it and then create a you know, create more more revenue, more tax revenue. So and then we're gonna pay it back with that. Well, it it hardly ever happens. 
we're going to get into some really deep details. And I'm not sure we want to do that. What I would like to do is I'd like to spend uh, another episode on just talking about local politics and talking about TIF and how it can affect us and how it can positively. I'll say this. Tax increment finance is, is, is the most powerful thing that you can change at a local level. It's the most powerful thing in a that's good way happening. Or bad way. In a bad or way. It's a it's it, it can be in a good way. For instance, you can use you can you, you can use tax increment financing to to safely increase your population and pick what population that how you want it to how you want it to rise. You can use that in your in your community. Um what about well, we're bringing, really going to go off? No, that's here right. I can I can ask a couple questions on that. Okay. What about bringing in a business because that business can hire yeah. people in that city or Absolutely. people in wherever that township or whatever it is. Yeah. What about doing you know, I guess you, can you do homes like can okay. you do tiffs on like a home? So like in the state of Indiana, or? we can't use tax increment financing to pay salaries like hire firefighters, hire police officers, like things like that. But we can but, do taxes on like a certain. Thing in that, like, let's say you're putting in restaurants and you put a tax in on something that specifically goes in there, and then once that gets paid on to, that's how you could get some of that money, correct? Because I know, like, for one of the areas around here, they do like a food and beverage, yeah, and then you can do a food and beverage tax, and then and that goes towards fire and police, yeah, food and beverage tax, yeah, you know, when you, you can't do what we've done to restaurants and then increase their, their tax, mm-hmm. and people say, well, it's the consumer paying it, like. Well, it, it it it's part it's it's part of the a part of the business. So you know, like this year, we mm-hmm. had people doing that. They wanted to raise raise the food and beverage tax. Mm-hmm. You want to raise the food and beverage tra- tax in the middle of a fake pandemic. In the middle of a <laughs> if we say fake pandemic, I don't want to. Oh, get, oh, we can't say well, you I can guess say it. But what I'll say is, this is a very re- very real disease, a very real thing. It is. Um, but the way the government has reacted to it, yeah. there's it's very sure. politically controlled. That's there's no lines at the funeral homes. Yes. I'm just saying. And we're not even. Uh, there's there, that's we'll, all we'll, I can we'll, say on it. We'll, yeah, we'll, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That'll we'll be another episode. Yeah, we'll come, we'll come back to that. But yeah. we cannot tell people. We can't put these burdens on people, which is a choice, an unconstitutional choice. We can't put these burdens on businesses. And I mean, we've, we've, I don't even know if we want to get into that. We've damaged so many we businesses. Can, we can get into ridiculous. that on a later notice, yeah. but. Um, let people be free. But yeah, let people back to be the, free. Let's let people be free. I, it's it's I really that, that easy. I agree let's with just, that too. Let's just, just read the Constitution. It's very simple. And yeah. let's just let people be free. It's really simple. We can even talk so, about drugs. So, yeah. So. <laughs> Back to the back to the taxes. So, if we if we if we lure businesses in, here's here's one of the big problems that I see, and I'll, we see it in this area is, we brag about businesses bringing jobs into town. Well, if those jobs don't have, um, let, let's say our average wage is, and I'm just going to throw some numbers out here. Let's say our mm-hmm. average wage is 19 bucks, 20 bucks an hour to, in, in 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 city Z. And, well, that sounds pretty and, good. and a business comes and a business comes in and says, I'm going to bring 400 jobs and I want a tax abatement. I don't want to pay any taxes, but I'm going to bring a bunch of jobs. And so all the city people are like, well, we're going to have jobs. Well, what if those jobs are paying $16, $17 or, well, the people of that town are not going to quit their job to go work the job that pays less. So what happens is you become a magnet for lower income families outside of your city. So those families come since, since TIF, since the TIF funds can't be, um, spent on salaries. Now you have a city who is can't hire police officers, can't hire firefighters. Our safety is down, and we're going to increase crime. Nothing against low income families. Um, I've been a low income family uh, a, a large portion of my life. So the the uh, but it's but it's an actual it's a, it's it's reality. It's a part of reality that when you increase low income families into your community. Crime rises. Yeah, if, so if, if we don't doing, shore up, if you look at yes. Indianapolis, um, if you look at Indianapolis, I had a, I had a conversation uh, with Jeff Cartwell. We talked about tax increment financing for mm-hmm. Indianapolis. One of the things that Jeff said is we wanted to shore up our safety before we were increasing populations and doing these other things. That was first. That was the first thing. Well, since you can't use tip for that, you're going to have to be you're going to have to figure out a, another way to do that. And the way you do that is you focus on. You focus on the businesses that have those those higher salaries. You focus on the dental clinics, the accounting firms, the law firms, the mom and pop shops. Mm-hmm. Though that's where those are good wages. The, the small business, and you can build those companies up, 
And then in return, the low income can start yeah. working out of it. Yeah, sure. Okay, I agree with that. Yeah. When, when we start talking about low income families and then that's where the highest statistics of crime come from, it, it may be true. I have not looked at that information to make sure and cross-reference it, make sure it's completely true. And it's, 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 not, it's not just low income. I'm it's saying that low income, but there's an increase in crime. Yes, when but you once, bring, you start, once you start creating cities into lower income cities that's when you're going to see people that are mad there are people yeah. that are going to be very people that yeah. are angry who are lo- taking a pay cut sure. and then overall and overall you have a less happy city i would sure. rather have a i'd rather have a city that is happy to be there yeah. i'd rather everybody make more money yeah i'd rather more money be coming in and then yeah. going out I, and not yeah. taxing people by it yeah. if we're giving people by it, i don't agree with yeah. that if we're giving an abate if we're going to give an abatement to anybody there should be some very strong absolutes that are a plus to that to to that city to our community. The wages should be higher than what we have right now. They should be hiring from our area. They're they're saying, well, we can't by law make it. Well, you can. There's many. Listen, we do all sorts of acrobatics, you know, lots of legal acrobatics, so that local politicians can get their way. We do it all the time. We borrow. One of the problems with the tip funds is we borrow from tip funds to do things outside of the district. We there, a, a lot. TIF districts are abused across the nation. That's that's the it's it's just it's abuse. What we but what see, if but, it's going? What if that is being borrowed and going outside of the outside of the district? What if that's being used for good to help out a, in either another city or if that's helping out another area of land that's going to help bring that up? What about how do you money? monetize that to pay back the fund? Oh, I don't know. I'm not a see, politician. So no. that's what I'm saying. You <laughs> have I'm, you have I'm to monetize. Owner, you have to monetize these things, and they have to be really solid. Mm-hmm. So. If you, when I hear about a business, let's just say business, um, I'll just pull a name out of thin air here, um, Azon. If you, <laughs> there's a business called Azon, and they're not going to pay any taxes. And when it comes time for their abatement to, 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 be, to be finished, they're going to, the city's going to say, okay, it's time to start paying. That company is going to say, um, we're going to leave. We have automation to move our automation, and we're just going to leave. So, no local politician wants that on their watch, so they're going to give the abatement again. But what about all the we'll jobs? Never that, we'll let's never let's collect. Let's say when that business comes in and they offer, let's say, 300 jobs. Mm-hmm. That means there's po- there's the possibility of th- excuse me, 300 citizens in that city alone that get a job. And then that, that in return, increases their home salary. Let's say now the wife gets a job or the husband gets a job now or the child gets a job and is working there. Now they're building their own household up. What, what about that, though? If you need those jobs, if those are the jobs mm-hmm. that your people need, if the job is paying less than what, you're, what the people that you have, yeah. if the job's already paying less than that, and if, you're, you know, if your kids have jobs, these are kids. Some of these jobs are kids. Yeah. Jobs. When I hear people talk about raise the minimum wage, I say work an adult job. Yeah, work an adult job. Like we have, we have. Well, children I worked at McDonald's, and yeah. I did oh, not. Yeah. Make, I didn't make much, oh. but you know what? I learned if you if you want to start out a yeah. good place to work, start out at McDonald's. They, yeah, I learned a great yeah. work ethic there. Yeah, and now I might not have the same work ethic. They have some incredible know. programs. They, I mean, they do have some. The story really of McDonald's, great. the history of McDonald's. They've got Hamburger great. University. Like yeah. it's a legit like college. Yeah, and you can go there and get a degree yeah. in like burger studies and own know. a McDonald's. Yeah, you own can own your own right? McDonald's, yeah. which I highly suggest yeah. become an entrepreneur. So, so what what I say is, as long as you're bringing good jobs and you're bringing the jobs that the community needs, and you're not becoming a magnet for someone outside of your community. All you're doing is removing the burden from somewhere else and putting it in your city. So if your city's in trouble, when I hear someone say, I'm bringing 400 new jobs to town, I say, you know, and if they're those jobs, I'm like, why? Why Why are you doing that? Why would you bring those jobs? Why not? And at the same time, we often see places that their eyeballs are always on the big, they're the big companies trying to get the big drop. But all along, we're hurting the small businesses. We're not streamlining, streamlining their businesses. We're not giving them opportunities. What we do is we're raising their their rate we raise their their taxes, we raise their permit fees, we you know, we punish, we're punishing these small businesses, or we just ignore them so we can do the things that we want to do to get the big chunk because it sounds good as a politician. I brought 400 new jobs to town. Well, okay, is it a guarantee? Are you is is that business guaranteed to hold those 400 jobs? And how long are they gonna hold those 400 jobs? What's the salary? Are you going to keep that salary? If you don't keep the 400 jobs for the length of your abatement and you don't keep the salaries for the length of your abatement, then do you continue to get the abatement? We never do that. We don't do that. Wise, very wise politicians who are, 
who have their city's best interest in mind, they will always do that. They'll always do that. They'll say, they'll make guarantee, serious guarantees about those jobs. We always have this projected thing. They, we believe they're going to create 200 jobs. Like, believe they're going to create 200 jobs. What do you mean? They should absolutely be providing those jobs, whether there's a recession, whether there's, it doesn't matter what be able to, how would, how would we as citizens in any city that we're at, how would we be able to make sure that we can get those answers? So where, what would we have to do? Like say, city like, council, you know, sit, sit on a city go, council go to your and city, talk to them and ask them questions. Go to your city council meeting, show up at, show it up at every meeting and uh, try to understand it, do a little bit of research and see, this is the part that upsets me because we should not have to be, I don't think it's unreasonable for a citizen to say, I trusted them, I elected them, I'm raising my kid, I'm going to work, I have you know a house to take care of. I can't be at every city council meeting that happens directly after I get off work that I drive from another side of town because we don't have the good jobs here, and I drive from the other side of town. I can't be at that meeting on a week night when I have my children and have pe people can't do that. We should be able to expect our elected officials to to go through this, do these things with our best interests in mind and not be greedy, not, you know, take care of all their buddies in the development world and the big companies who come in with their lawyers and woo them from San Francisco or New York. We shouldn't we should expect those elected officials to do what they said they're going to do and take care of us. But if you are concerned and you don't think that you're, if you don't believe that your your local politicians are looking out for you or doing these things for you, show up to the city council meetings, understand what's on those agendas. Don't take no for an answer. When it's time to get up and speak, get up and speak. And you know what? I use use the power that big tech uses against us. Use big tech. Use your phone. Take videos. Show that you showed up. Show your friends and show your social media family that you showed up. You asked these questions and you did or didn't get answers. Those are things that you can do. But the biggest thing you can do is show up on primary election day. Primary election day. We ought to get back to that because yeah, we did get a we got one off for about because that's minutes. the big <laughs> because that is the biggest problem that we have yeah, in this that, country. That is a pretty big. When issue. we go to the tip top problem of what makes people very angry. All of that can be solved on primary election day. To kind of explain it a little bit so that way the viewer can kind of understand it. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. So Joe Biden was voted in as the primary candidate for the presidency. Correct. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> but Kamala Harris was voted yeah. out like first. Wouldn't she vote wasn't she voted out um, extremely early or I think was she was second? I don't think she was doing very well and, and I she, she dropped out. They probably cut a deal. I mean they probably cut a deal and said, Hey, if you if you get out of the way, we'll bring you back. Yes, because the same I way that we had when that Pete happened, Buttigieg, Buttigieg from Gary. Sure. And when he dropped, everybody was like, Wait a minute, why did he drop? I mean, I didn't think he was gonna win, but he but why did he drop? Because they cut a deal with him. You yes. know, I mean that's so the way it works. When, that's why he comes back. When, when, they, when she dropped pretty early on, which I like for for the Democrat yeah. side, I like Tulsi Gabbard a lot. Like I, th I think a lot of her I think a lot of her ideas are are pretty decent. And then there's some that I don't agree with at all. I feel like you just want to work out with her. Or, no, I don't. She's I, she's all big into fitness. And well, stuff. you know what? I'd probably she's not eating like five I gallons would, of gravy. Today. I know. Well, that. I tell you what, I still eat a lot. I feel like I can lift have more weights than her <laughs> at anything. At any yeah. exercise. Anyways, but yeah. I, I liked her more than I did like anybody else because she doesn't seem crazy to me. No, she, she doesn't, doesn't seem untrustworthy. I she think she's reasonable. pretty awesome. We just like, not awesome. Yeah. Honest. I'm sorry. Yeah. I said awesome. Honest. Yeah. She yeah. seems more honest than she's not people. awesome. In my she's opinion. not awesome in any opinion. But and she her is career, honest. her career is pretty awesome in the military. Yeah. I pretty I think that's awesome. Yeah. She's dedicated. I mean she's very dedicated. I would I mean, um I'm a Republican all the way. Mm -hmm. I vote for Republicans. Um and so and when I say a Republican, again, the platform. If you, I mm -hmm. vote for the person on the ballot who most represents the Republican platform. If they have a history of doing the things on the platform, small government, low taxes, m lots and lots of freedom, follow the Constitution. Who doesn't want freedom? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's what yeah. that's what cracks me up. For it's Who crazy. does not want freedom? Uh, apparently, millions of people. There's today. tens of millions of people. I've been mostly. Kids. I've been told mostly I, kids. And and I understand people. there are certain things that you can say that bridge into freedom. We can get onto those topics a lot later. I don't want to start basically yeah. having people 
throwing cans at me whenever they sure. see me outside with because of my opinions and stuff, sure. which I'm okay. I'm okay with that. I just don't want to start that off this early. But I but, can. We can be really honest. It's young people. It's people who it's have old. never. You haven't paid a car payment, had a house exactly. payment. You haven't had to take care of children. You, you, don't have, you haven't done you, those you things. You don't have your own home. Yeah, those you don't people. Have bills. Yeah, but and they've I, been told though. They've been lied to for a long time. Yes, they've been lied to. They've been told that you, that they should expect basically everything Correct. for doing very little. I tell you what, I was more. I when I graduated high school, I I always went to the right side because it was always like that's what my parents did. You know, they'd always vote towards the right, and I'm like, yeah, you know. But then I was like, well, Barack Obama though, and he's a Democrat, so I'm like, maybe I'm could be more interested in him. Yeah. And then once I started, I got a job before I left high school, and yeah. I, I started once I turned 18, I started sure. paying taxes, and then money's going away from there me go. and it's going to somebody else. Like, yeah. why is my money that I worked for going yeah. to somebody else? Yeah, there, there should be no no reason why my money's going to yeah. someone else. And then I I started. <clears throat> making payments on stuff. I started getting bills coming in and I'm having to pay all these bills and, and then on top of that, I'm still getting taxed. I'm like, there's just so much money I'm just yeah. giving away. I'd raise the voting age for non-military members of our citizens. I would, yeah. I would raise, I, I, I'm, I I'm for that. raising, the, ra- raising the age of voting. I'm, I'm for, yeah. I'd like to Unless raise... you're in the military, I'm for raising the age of voting. Yeah. I just, I, I think that, I think we're, I think it's extremely irresponsible of to our country. To let an 18 year old. To let, yeah. I mean, we, we all agree. Should, should people under 21 drink? Should, no. should, should people under 21 drink? I mean, should they, should they, if, if we know that, then we realize that there's an, that there is a, there's a line, there's a difference of, in responsibility. And if you are too irresponsible to drink a beer, if you're too, too irresponsible to drink a, um, what are those things that people are drinking now? Those little weird water things. Oh, uh, the seltzers. What, or the or the tr- zimas. Tr- zimas was an old. Thing. Yeah, whatever. One of those. They're all the same. Are you talking? But about, if you're too irresponsible, I can't remember that to have that. a seltzer water. Comment, with the, comment that in the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> whatever that is. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember what it's called. Is it Trulys? Truly, if you're a truly, yeah, if you truly. are too irresponsible to have a truly with a <laughs> Jolly Rancher dropped in the bottom That's of it, that's a Zima. <laughs> whatever it and is, they're, too, they're pretty good. If you're that irresponsible, <laughs> you if you can't be trusted to drink one of those, you cannot be trusted to pick the the, the president of the United States. <laughs> this is crazy. You know what? There's and a, that's the thing. If you look that, at Democrats, that's who they target. Yeah. They target young people. They've been doing that for a long time. And they've been, they're setting it up because they control the education system. So they lied and lie and lie and lie. They say, capitalism doesn't work. The cards are stacked against you. Don't try. You don't have, don't, no use in trying because you can't make it because everything's against you. You'll never make it on your own. You have to have the government. The government has to feed you, clothe you, house you, you know, it has to do all these things. They're told that in, in grade school, high school, college. They get squirted out into a world of capitalism, and they've only heard half the story. So they're not learning anything that's worth a dollar when they're in there. So they come out, they're angry, they're mad. And honestly, I don't blame them. They've been lied to. I don't like what they're going to do with their anger because they're going to go vote in a really silly, silly way. But I understand it. I started my undergrad. I was 36 years old at IUPUI. You went to college? I couldn't. Oh, man. Yeah. I went as a hobby. <laughs> I mean, I had a successful business when I went to college. So I was, I actually, oh, okay. I wanted to learn more about, about economics. I wanted to learn more about, I ended up falling in love with philosophy when I was in college. I didn't realize I was so much into philosophy. She? Turns out, turns out, <laughs> never, Jason. Never heard of I'm her. the philosophizer. <laughs> philosophizer. Yeah. So, so, uh, no, I, I did. I actually, I, I had a couple of professors that I, that were, um, uh, one of them was like super hippie lefty, but like we we really hit it off, and he was just a brilliant guy, and and uh, we just at the end of the day, like we just we disagreed. We we talked about philosophy and got really deep down into it. And if you're into if you're into philosophy, you know, it's it could it's a deep rabbit hole. You can really get into some serious stuff. And I did. I did with my professor. We would have some really deep conversations, and we basically would get to the bottom core of things and say. That we found where we just disagree. Mm-hmm. We got to it and said, I choose this way, you choose that way. And that was it. We just disagreed. And every day we had fun. We laughed. We high-fived and did all kinds of great stuff. And uh, But we disagreed at the end of the day. And he was going to vote another way. But it wasn't because he was lied to and he was a kid or mm-hmm. had never had paid, you know, because he was reasonable too. He was not like a crazy globalist leftist, you know, nut job. He was just, he was just, um, you know, agreed with some more left ideas. He just wasn't radical and crazy. So, and and uh, and I'm not radical and crazy. I'm. A, I think anyone who knows me knows I'm a very compassionate, 
guy. People see me on social media. Listen, I never pass up an opportunity to poke fun at somebody who's being ridiculous. Oh, so yeah. if you read my social media or have read my social media, if somebody comes at me, bro, then I'm going to have a little fun with them. And that's just it. And if you know me, you should know that I am never this guy. When you're typing... <laughs> the keyboard warrior. I'm never that. I'm this guy. <laughs> and then you crack a joke, and then it's going good. Yeah. I'm the guy who posts... Somebody says something ridiculous, and I post a cuckoo clock. And I just say, you're, you're crazy. You know, like... And, I, and, 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 and sometimes, you know, people are like, Jay, you're really immature. Well, I'm not really immature. That could be seen as immature, you know. But there's a little portion of me... It is, yeah. I am immature, oh, and yeah. I. But I, I think but at, it's, at some but point, it's, but everybody it's well everybody is mature. But you just yeah. can't be like going out there being stupid. Yeah, it's know? well controlled. You yeah. know, like because yeah. there's a lot of stuff I just want to do that it would be really stupid yeah. and it would really embarrass myself, which I don't yeah. care. But Savannah cares, my yeah. wife, and she's like, you sure. can't do that. Oh yeah. Oh my wife. Mm. Oh, I can't. When we first met, we would we would go on dates. I had. And I'm not afraid to say. I had a girl's car. I had an Audi TT. <laughs> And I, hey, I love it. It's it, listen. That is one of my favorite cars in the world. Well, I used it's like to the, want one of those. Cars. It's the no, best thing for your buck. I don't even know how you'd fit in it. Oh, you're right. too tall. So, oh, yeah. But I had this Audi TT. It had really dark tinted windows, and she was so embarrassed by things I would do. I mean, me, I just if I if I pull up next to somebody, my windows down and their windows down. Like I know that some people feel real awkward about that. I don't. I look over. If you if you're in a store and somebody's like sitting there by you, like you don't say. How you doing? I know that's Good weird. Day. It's weird if you don't say something. Yeah, I do. To it. me, it's weird because like, like when I go to the yeah. sauna and there's somebody already in there, and I'm like, "Hey, man, how's it going?" And they're like, "Uh, yeah. you say something." I'm like, "Yeah, what's up? <laughs> How you doing?" Yeah, because you're sitting here. Sure. I'm sitting here. I want to talk. You're gonna sit here yeah. and listen to me. Like, yeah. And then if they don't want to talk and it's obvious, yeah, and it's fine. Like, I'm not gonna be mean or make him feel uncomfortable. No, no. I'll I just, just say, stop. I, I just say, say right. "Hey, how you doing today? You like my Audi? <laughs> you like my Audi? Like my Audi?" But but anytime or Audi or whatever, yeah, whatever you it call it, I don't, I don't know. know. Any Audi? I grew Audi. up with Audi, yeah. Any, yeah. yeah any Audi? I'll take know. any Audi. I like. Joe used to have an Audi. He did have a great Audi. That's he right. had, yeah, he had me. He had me drive that. Yeah. So he calls me. He goes, "You know how to drive a stick?" And I said, uh, "Yeah, I, I know how. I know the concept. Just haven't done it in two years." And he goes, <laughs> "Cool, man. I'm buying a car. You got to ride with me." Doesn't even tell me anything. We drive yeah. all the way down to Kentucky. Yeah. I think it was Bowling Green, Kentucky. Yeah. And we pull up in the parking lot, and then this car comes pulling up. I'm like, that's a nice car. He goes, I'm buying that car. I'm like, what? He goes, yeah, I'm buying that car. You got to drive it back. I can't drive stick right now. And then I was like, all right. So the guy hands me the keys, and he says, all right, let's go. And I drove all the way back from Bowling Green, Kentucky. That's a great drive. I yeah. used to drive my Audi down that way when I go to Nashville. <laughs> and I, I drove an Audi. I commuted, I commuted to Nashville a lot when I had Did that you really? Audi. Yeah. So I got to drive that little car. Like, You know what I like about it? Because I've spent a lot of my life mm -hmm. on a motorcycle. And driving a little sports car like that, it's kind of like a motorcycle. You can just kind of get in what? any little gap you want. That, the Audi R8, and I'm assuming the Audi TT is about the, they're about the similar cars, except for just the, the Audi R8. It's just the R8's body style. Engine. Body style. That's wise, the same it engine as like in the Lamborghinis. Yeah, Absolutely. that's insane. Yeah. I tell you what, that car handles yeah. extremely well. Yeah. And the acceleration on it, the the handling, it's the suspension on it was fantastic. Yeah. I loved driving that car. Yeah. And it sounded great too. Yeah. But anyways, back to politics. Yeah. So, so we got young people we talked, voting. We got young people voting yeah. who were brought up in a world. Now, let's say teachers. There's teachers out there that I know I had teachers out there that would say, hey, think for yourself. And when you get out into the world, try to bring in all the information you can and make yeah. your own decision, which yes. I'm, I'm 100 percent OK yeah. with that. But I also had teachers that would sit there and they would sit on a soapbox and they would tell you who was bad and who was good. Yeah. And a lot of my teachers that I remember, they would push, they were very pro-Democrat, and they yeah. would push a lot of that stuff. And that's what, what's, and, and honestly, today... And a lot of pro-abortion. Well, and, that's what... That's and what, I, don't, I don't call it pro-choice. I call it pro-abortion, yeah, sure. because that's what and that's And that's why we have such a high rate of, you know, Ill illiteracy. That's why we have such a hard time uh, with kids that don't understand math. Uh, you know, we're having such poor results. And, and, and listen, I'm not going to pour all that on education. And when I say, you know, when, when you talk about teachers, people get upset. They're like, oh, you're talking about teachers. They, they, they work with children. And listen, if I can't do that. Wonderful children. I love, you know, yeah. it, this world needs lots of wonderful, great teachers. You know, mm -hmm. that I, I think that we have we have set ourselves up in a position where we are. Um, there's not enough checks and balances. 
on, on, in our that education system. That is true, system. especially the not. teacher's union. Uh, yeah. I watched a, a whole video on a girl that yeah. w- they used to be in the teacher's union, and yeah. she talked about, um, per, for her state, every teacher hired, there was two administrative people hired at the teacher's union itself at some yeah. organization outside of it. And then that's where their sal- their salary that would have gone to that teacher goes to these other people. Now sure. that was that their, their state she was from, but I don't know how true it is for every state. I truly think that our teachers do a, a, a lot of our teachers do a really incredible job with our students. Cause I've seen, I've watched a lot of videos. I remember those teachers. Yeah. I had those teachers that were fantastic. This is, yeah. Uh, Mrs. Poe I had. She yeah. was incredible. Mrs. Bonham I had. She was incredible. I'd have to say that almost mm-hmm. all of my teachers when I was a kid, but I'm 48 years old. Oh, yeah. Education has changed so Education yeah. has, has changed so much, you know. Um, you know, I think... I remember there's I, a lot of teachers I, I had. There's a lot of teachers I had that were checked out. And that's so, what sucked. When you, today when is a different... It's a different ball game today. Mm-hmm. One in 500 teachers are fired for poor performance. One in 500. And I... I I can't quote that. I don't. I don't know where I, I know where I got that, but I know it's right. Yeah. I, I don't. I, I guess you know what. I guess I don't know that it's right. I know that I read that, and I'm pretty sure that it was. Um, It'd be cool to have from. No, I, I believe that was from a from the teacher from, from a teachers union. Teachers union. Yeah, yeah. I was reading. There. But one in five hundred teachers are fired for poor performance. There is no industry in this world, <laughs> no other industry in this world that's that way. You go to the hair industry. Go to go to a beauty salon. Go go to a beauty salon, a hair salon. One in five hundred. They, they fire five and ten. Oh, you yeah. know are fired. I mean, go I to a couple go to that a, have been fired. Yeah, go to a restaurant. And see how many servers. Like one in five hundred. Heating and air people, plumbers, motorcycle technicians, if it, if it, so motorcycle you're restoration people. One in five hundred. That doesn't exist in any but other. But what you're industry. explaining was private businesses mainly. Uh, you were explaining a lot of private businesses right there. A lot of the, uh, most of the restaurants that are going to be like that. And That's most right. of those are privately owned. You're yeah. talking about motorcycle shops. Sure. Most of those are privately owned. You're talking yeah. about uh, what was a couple of the ones that you brought up? Look, what, let's just be honest. What I'm saying is it's privately owned yeah. stuff. So you've got a guy that's seeing it or a woman that's seeing it, and they're like, "I'm, I'm, this is going poor. Yeah. Like this is bad." Yeah. And I yeah. let's see, let's see what the issue is, and then they they hone in on it. They see yeah. what the issue is. I'm like, "Hey, you either got to change or you're going to get fired." And then yeah. they don't change, and then they get fired. Yeah. But what also you have is you have. An organization, or you have a school, a public school that's going to be having teachers that are working there, and then let's say they're performing poorly, and it goes on and on and on and yeah. on, and then nothing really gets addressed. Even if they do address it, what what yeah. is what could be a better route to take to for those types of teachers to increase performance? What would be a better route to take? Because there are a lot of teachers out there that give their well, heart we know that we put more money into education; it doesn't help. We already know that. I mean, that's a fact. I mean, that's just, you can't. You're there's there's for college level? Are you talking about for like high school, elementary, middle school? All. All of it? All. Money does not produce a better student. It doesn't. Money's not, not, not in public no, that education. Is, that is that is Not true. in public education. It's not producing a better student. We've pumped money into it, pumped money into it, pumped money into it. And a teacher asked me one time, do you think we're spending too much money on education? I said, I know it. I know we are. And I can tell you how. Because if you, if, if, if you put money, if, if, if let's just say that we had well, I do have one thing to say on that. What about those? What about the cities and the schools that are not getting enough money to get? And bef- hey, hey, before you say that, oh, listen, yeah. it's almost seventy percent of our budget is public education. Okay, well, that's we have a, a lot. Of, we have a lot of schools, and so, I, well, I'm going to try to be the advocate of the yeah. schools. So what about? Oh, the, I am. I'm an yeah. advocate for for oh, good teachers. I want, I want very good great education. Teachers. I want great teachers, and yeah. I know a lot of great yeah. teachers. I see. I, I do too. A, I'm friends with them on Facebook, and I see the I'm stuff. Friends with post. them in person. Yeah, uh, yeah. I yeah. hug I've, them. I've, and I've I met them in person. And I know. And I, I'm just not close friends with them. And I and, and I learn things from those mm-hmm. teachers. So what about with if they have? It'd be more like let's let's use this as an example really quick. What about like the whole defund the police that just happened? People are yeah. like defund the police, and then there's a lot of people on the right. They're like, no, we need to fund them so they can get better training, yeah. so they can get better equipment. People on the right, people on the left, people, on, people the on the left, left understand this. I just listened to. So what about with schools? So what if they're using that same analogy with schools? Like, hey, we need more funding in schools. Now I do understand there is a lot of stuff going on in California with the teachers union and what they're wanting, which is. In Absolutely Indiana. insane, and I haven't seen much in Indiana yet. So here's so here's back to that yeah. thing of how I know we're paying too much, yeah. because if if we're producing, let's just say, and nobody likes to talk about you know average grades and things of that nature, but let's just say in testing, let's just say that we're producing a student that is 
at this level. We're producing a student at this level. And then we say, well, we need more money so we can produce, make this student come to this level on the average, on the average student, come to this level. And then we pour millions more, $10 million more dollars into it. And the student doesn't go to this level. They say, well, we didn't quite do it. Let's put another 10 or 20 million, put another 10 or 20 million. And it still doesn't go to this level. In fact, it goes this way. Okay. At, when it starts going this way and you're putting more money in, you're overpaying for education. Because what the money you're putting in is not working. It's not having that effect. And they say, well, but we don't control that money. Well, you do. They do control that money. The teacher union does control that money. I mean, let's just be honest. The teacher unions are an extension of the Democrat Party. That, that's, it's, it's, a, it's just another arm of the Democrat Party. It's a way what of collecting they... money. And if you know that, you're, that nearly 70% of your budget, let's just say it's 65% of the budget, I think 68%. If, if that's where the biggest chunk of money is. Why do you think they're going? They're aiming at that. Why do you think they go that way? And the poor teachers, they're stuck in the middle of it because there's wonderful teachers. What if I they, mean, oh, there's a lot of them. They're stuck there. Teachers. So they're quick. stuck competing on this unfair field. So what if they keep the? And I don't know. I'm not a teacher, so I don't know a ton of stuff what the teachers union provides. What if the teachers unions are helping out with school supplies? What if they're helping out with getting raises, well, well needed raises? to these teachers that are working at all these public for schools. For good teachers. For, for good great teachers. teachers. Absolutely. I have, I have, We're not probably, paying good teachers enough money. I'll be the first person to say with you, But I want to I wanna make sure that I'm covering all these bases. What yeah. if the teachers union is really helping out with research being done on what, what how do students learn best? Which there's a there's a teacher that I used to have that left my, my school and went to another school. And he got the idea to start another program, which... I believe it was an entrepreneurship and it got these kids to come in and it was tailored to how they learn, which is incredible. Which that's I think Elon Musk started I'll his own school for that. It's incredible. That is incredibly important. Yes. So and, and what about these teachers unions that are coming in? And dyslexia helping is where dyslexia is a very that. important one. Yeah. My wife yeah. has that one. And, and it's yeah, I have learned when I ran for the, the, my state rep mm -hmm. position here, when I ran for that race, or it's not my position, I lost. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, Michelle it's, Davis in fact, got it's, that one. In fact, it's no one person's position. It belongs. To, it belongs to the district. Belongs to the people. And we have a great state representative. And um, that was a great. That was a. I'll tell you what. That was a great race. I had a lot of fun in that race. You and did. I know Michelle. I know Michelle had a lot of fun in that yeah, race. That's good. And uh, yeah, she's she's going to be a great representative. Yeah. And we've got to know each other. You know. Much better. That's good. And uh, so, yeah, she's she's really so good. So back to the, the and she's unions. very very sharp with education. That's, she was involved in education, yeah. but back to the, the teachers' unions. What if they're trying to do what's best for the teachers? What if they're trying to help out with with financing? Or what if they're trying to help with funding, trying to help with school supplies and getting raises to the teachers that deserve them? And even the ones that don't deserve them, I know they get them. I understand that. But what, what if that's what a lot of the positives outweigh the negatives? What if that's the case, which is why these, a lot well, of I these think the, teachers— I think you would see the I think you would see that— I think you'd see an increase in the production of great students of I learning. I think that. you'd see it. But if you don't see that, then it's not that. It's something else. But I'll tell you, Cheryl Clemens, she, mm -hmm. brilliant. And I hope she doesn't mind me bringing her name in this, but she is, I mean, she's brilliant. You look at my phone, you see her name? It's that Cheryl Clemens. Brilliant. When I first <laughs> met her, that's what I put in. She was just, she's she's so incredibly smart. I'm not, Who is she? Cheryl, I'm not sure what she did. She did, she was, she's a chemist. And oh. she's incredibly analytical, and she did some things with Eli Lilly. It's probably I'm not sure what it is. <laughs> All I know is this: whatever it is that she did, it's 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 beyond. She, she's smart. My capabilities yeah. of understanding whatever wonderful things that she did. But she is now. I'm I'm going to get all of this wrong, but she's now been appointed to some position in education for the state. But she has fought very hard for um, students with uh, dyslexia. And it's a huge problem. Mm. I have dyslexia, and I've always felt that I did. But uh, the more that I learned from Cheryl, and the more that I, the more that I uh, uh, looked into it and tried to understand some of the problems that students were going through, I had those problems when I was in class. Like a lot of the, a lot of the issues that I had that I felt, I felt there were times when I was young. I felt, am I dumb? Is there something wrong with me? Calm down, people. Is I. <laughs> Yes, you're dumb. You are you're dumb, dumb, Jay. Jay. <laughs> <laughs> but but I when I was a kid, I I was I had I had a very hard time, you know, paying attention, keeping up, mm -hmm. reading, you know, retaining information. With me, I am I, I I'm a hands-on in-person. You Do know, you have ADD or ADHD? 
I don't know. I probably I got a, I had ADHD. I, and I probably have. I tell you what, though, it's one of the most fantastic yeah. things I've ever had because yeah. it sucks at one point, but it's great at another parts. I have FAT belly. <laughs> um, no, you know, um, I think that I, I do think you hit on something there, and I, I wish mm-hmm. that. But the problem is, uh, the teacher unions were fighting that. You mm-hmm. know, fighting, fighting against those things. So, learning new ways, having teachers learning new ways to to educate yeah i i think you know that i think that's great i think we should Mm -hmm. we should be applying some of that money money to those areas for sure but listen we don't need there's enough money in the budget right now we can reallocate we can do some other things but there's enough money in the budget when you consider how much of the state budget that is is being applied to education right now and back to tiff tiff hurts Mm -hmm. schools tiff hurts school funding okay period that's all there is to it. It it takes money away from schools. Bottom line. But what if it doesn't? So if you're a <laughs> I don't know. I don't if know you're a, would. <laughs> if if you're a teacher, you should not be incredibly excited about tax increment financing. Because then the taxes aren't going towards the the local yeah. school district, so that yeah. way they can build up. Unless you have a better long term plan than most most cities in the country. If 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 you because TIF works. If if there's if if there's if there's really smart people involved and and they're acting incredibly responsibly because TIF debt is dangerous debt. It's dangerous debt for a city. We'll get back to that. Yeah. Next, schools. Another episode. But you know, I think education is a part of we, we we started this conversation by talking about divisiveness and how the country is so divided. Well, a lot of it is it's education. It starts in education, it starts in elementary, you're in high school, in college. And they're they preach these words, they go to these colleges, and it's 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 they they come out of there with a new idea. Conservative families see it all the time. Their children go off to college, and all of a sudden they come back, and they're even though mom and dad have worked hard, paid for a nice house, put them through college, somehow that kid is brighter than mom and dad now. They know more. They're they're enlightened. I, I didn't go to college, and I thought I was smarter than my parents when I graduated, high school. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't go to college. Hey. And, and I tell you what, it's yeah. it's just it's an immaturity thing because that's I it, definitely it, realized I hit, am not smarter than my parents. That's right, and you know what? You, you hit on some an immaturity thing. Those children are vulnerable, and that's what makes it even worse. Very impressionable, extremely Very impressionable. impressionable. And there's a benefit from being 36 years old and running a business, a successful business, mm-hmm. and sitting in a classroom with 18 year old kids who are listening to a professor who has never been in business, who is a, a career student. Mm-hmm. Has never been off in business and actually worked in the real world, and I, I'm saying I'm, I'm saying this from you know personal experience. Having a a 25, 26 year old professor tell 18 year old kids how business operates, having never been in business herself or himself, it, it was shocking. I'm like every everything she said, I was like, that's that's wrong. That's that's not true. That's that's false. How do I know? Because I just came from my business where it's not true. You know, and, and I mean, everything from how taxes are collected or how they're applied. And, and, and I mean, from, I mean, everything was wrong, but it was all, it was all a, uh, you know, they were setting up a narrative that you can't make it in the real world. You can't. Well, maybe you can't make it in the real world because that college just talked you into taking, you know, becoming a, uh, 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 anthropology major, you know, where are you going to go get a job? I mean, listen, I know anthropologists have some jobs, but um, what are you going to do with that? What are you there's, actually going to learn? How do you how do you leave that school with something worth a dollar? There's that's that comes down. I think that comes down to the student and the parents, and also you can have. I remember being in high school. It wasn't that long ago. It was about 10 years ago. But I remember being in high It was 10 years ago. <laughs> that really just hit me. Uh, yeah. I remember being in high school and being embarrassed telling people that, no, I'm not going to college. Yeah. Because everybody in my class was talking about, where are you going to college? I got accepted here. Where are you going to go? Oh, I'm going over here. I applied for these places. I might be going there. And they were talking about all these great colleges, which college can be great. It can be great. Trade school, trade school, trade, trade school, school, trade school. is where it's at. That's trade where I school. went. I went to a trade school while I was, hey, thank you. I yeah. appreciate that. Yeah. I went to trade school my my junior and I did not go year. to trade school. Oh, I kind of went to trade school. Oh, well, I'm all about trade schools. Yeah. But I'm all about, I'm, co- I'm for colleges, but getting... 
There's an underwater basket weaving degree you can get in Michigan. And is that I, real? I hear that. That's is a that real, real thing. Okay. That's a real thing. Because I looked it up and I was like, oh my gosh, that's insanely stupid. Yeah. But like, what are you going to do with that? There's that's, a, that's a state that just, that's a state that has trouble counting votes. There's, there's, that's, a, yeah. that's so many issues. Yeah. We can't get into that right now. I'll get banned. But yeah. there's, there's a lot of issues with what, when you're in high school, you're getting pushed. And if you're in high school and listening to this, I highly doubt that you're listening to it. But if you're in high school and listening to it, comment down at the bottom to say and, t- and say if it's this is true or not still. Like if you're getting pressure to be going to college and then just don't yeah. even worry about picking anything. Just yeah. go to college. Or if your parents have told you that or even if you're out, out of high school and in college or you're a grown adult and your parents just tell you, just go get a degree. I don't care yeah. what it's in because you need one to well, get s- be a, successful. Get a skill that's worth a dollar. That's get, worth yes, money. Get something. Get a that's skill worth that's worth money. The most successful people that I know, the majority of them did not go to college. The most successful true, people true I know, no. multi multi millionaires, did not go to college. So I am I know I know very wealthy people who, are, or who went to college, of course. But the most successful people I know, the majority of them, did not attend college. They worked hard. They were dedicated. They didn't just sit around and wait for the government to send them a, you know, a $600 check. They didn't, you know, they, they went out and developed a skill. They didn't give up. And that's because when they were young, they had people telling them, you can do anything you want in America. All you have to do is get up in the morning, go to work, go to work. I mean, I can tell you from my experience, I came from, I mean, I came from, I mean, I came from poverty. I came from, from poverty. We were on government assistance. We did. So, you know, I mean. I can get into a lot of that later, but um, I had people around me saying, why are you such a screw up kid? Mm-hmm. You live in America. You have every opportunity. You're in control. And the minute that I realized that I was steering the ship, the minute I realized that, like, I'm, I can do this. Like, I'm out on my own. Now it's my fault whether or not I succeed. Now it's my fault. The minute that I realized that, the harder I worked, the longer I worked, and the closer I got to God... My life got better. I got happier. People always ask me all the time, like, oh, what can I do? Follow God. Exactly. Work hard. Work long. The biggest thing You'll that be you happy. just said right there was following God. That's right. There's a, it was pushed really hard when I was in school not to talk about religion or talk about God while at school. Yeah. And I was lucky enough that you would stand, you know, stand for the national anthem, put your hand over your heart. You yeah. say you say our, our, say our yeah. nation's anthem. And then I remember there being a prayer group in the morning and they would pray yeah. before school, which I was at the time I was like, that's weird. And then yeah. and then the more I think about that and now I believe that's gone now. I, I was told it was. Yeah. I don't know if it's true or not. But the the more that I've gotten closer to Christ, the more happier I've been. Yeah. And the more sure I've been about things like, hey, God's yeah. got I, I trust in him yeah. with whatever's going on in the world right now. Yeah. And that's I don't have to worry about that. Like sure. I'm a person that I should not I cannot be stressed. Yeah, if I'm I don't stressed, feel comfortable. Things go wrong. Yeah, I'm 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 not uncomfortable with God at all. Everywhere I go, like like people are a little surprised at me because, listen, I have a potty mouth. I am I'm a potty Damn mouth boy. Christian. I I do. I have a potty mouth. But I <laughs> listen. But everybody who knows me, they they know how much I love God. They know how much my family's dedicated to God, and you know I'm not I'm not embarrassed about it at all, and I'm never shy about it, and. Uh, uh, you know, we, we could talk about that forever. I mean, I, I have, I wanna well, I have a lot to say. Yeah. I have a lot to say about that. But I will tell you right now, I am very happy. My family's very happy. My family's, um, other than other than this, my family's very healthy <laughs> mentally. Anyways, I don't know how the girls do it, but I tell you what, God, God <laughs> I'm very is, healthy, and it's because God is in our home. Yes. Period. And yeah. things have gotten so much better with me and Savannah as as newlyweds. We're just outside of a year now, a year yeah. a year and a couple months, yeah. and bringing God into our relationship even more just oh man it makes things yeah. so much easier well because it explains it's, things oh it does because it makes everything it makes you, it, you understand yeah. you understand everything that's happening to you you understand temptation you understand you know you understand um the success of marriage the success mm-hmm. of relationship you understand how to how to dedicate yourself to really dedicate yourself to someone and aim to please that person in everything mm-hmm. that you do Along with God, because God wants you to do that. Yes, and it, and it feels good, and it makes you feel you feel oh, accomplished. Because listen, there's no feeling in the world than to talk to God and know that He's happy with you, mm-hmm. that He's pleased with your job and the job you're doing. 
It's great. Yeah. And there's, there's, no, there's, scarier, times. there's no scarier thing than knowing that you have not pleased exactly. God. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. But before I started giving yeah. my, more of my life to Christ, there was a time where I wasn't really truly much of a believer at all because because of some things that I would see. And I'm like, how is there evil? Yeah. And I did the whole typical thing. How is there evil in the world? How, if a God is so good, how is there evil? And then luckily I made friends with this guy. I'm not friends with him anymore. Yeah. It's too bad. But at that time in my life, God put him in my life. And yeah. I started going to men's Bible study. Yeah. And then it was, now, if you take one look at me, you're going to be like, if, if I see this guy walking around, you know, tattoos, yeah. kind of a muscular guy, kind of, yeah. a little bit bigger, does not look happy all the time. we got a resting, ugly yeah. person face. Yeah. And I'm like, he's not a Christian. Yeah. And I got a shaved head. I, I yeah. don't look the part, which is the best thing about yeah. it. But I went to this Bible study where there's other guys that look like me there. Yeah. And I'm like, these guys look like me. They don't look yeah. like the, the buttoned up with the, yeah. you know, the little collar on yeah. and, and, sure. and looks like that. And there's different there's different aspects to to each person's church that yeah. when you go there, you can definitely tell, like, this is not a guy I want to be friends with. Oh, yeah. This I mean, I grew I up in those churches. I grew yes. up in very dogmatic churches. Yes. And to me, that was yeah. the le- least attractive thing about going to church because it's like these don't look like manly men. I, when I went yeah. to my Bible study... Those guys looked like manly men. They looked scary. And I want to be with those guys because yeah. those are the castaway. Those are the guys that are cast outs that are yeah. not the normal guy. Sure. Like if you show up at a church if at a church wearing short sleeves, yeah. I mean, you'll get some looks. Sure. I know I got some looks. Oh, I always do. Yeah. And if that I, was my if biggest I go thing back against my, churches. I'm like, yeah, if no. I go back to my churches, yeah. If I go to a church now, there's a couple I have in mind that if I went to, I know I would get eyes on me about my tattoos. I I tell people, and, and this is in all honesty, and, and there's a lot of, I can say this about politics as well, but like mm-hmm. I met the best people that I've ever met in my life I met in church. I also met, unfortunately, some of the worst people I ever met in my yeah. life. Or, and they're not, thing. look, and they're not, they're misguided. Mm-hmm. You know, they're really misguided. They might have had a bad morning. Yeah. Might have had a bad morning. Might have no. gotten to a fight oh, with had, husband or wife. They had kids. a lot of bad mornings. Like oh, so. yeah. But, but, I, I, but I did. I still met the best. Look, if you show up on Sunday, Sunday morning, you don't have to get up and go anywhere. I mean, if you're not going to work. So if you go to a place that everyone is there and you're gathered for the sake of goodness, listen, that's 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 a wonderful thing. Mm-hmm. You can, I mean, I can explain that. You can take God out of the out of that equation. I don't take God out of any equation, but you could take God out of that equation, and it would still apply. If everybody shows up and says, "Listen, on such and such day, we're going to wake up early in the morning. We're going to put on some nice clothes." I, I, I don't have I don't. very nice yeah. clothes. But we're going to put on your nice sweatshirts. I got dress sweats. And you're going to go to this place, and everyone is going to show up there. They're going to be smiling. They're going to be talking about great things and trying to help each other and as a, as a, as a community within a community. It's a lot of the fellowship. Is what How's it that is. bad? It's not bad at all. How's that bad? And guess what? Bonus. You get to live forever. <laughs> Bonus. Yeah, it's even better. Yeah. Yeah. There's so with talking about religion and we were talking about politics, what yeah. do you think the state of our politics are in our country involved with religion? So you'll see I see this and I remember when me and Savannah got blessed we got blessed to go to the National Prayer Breakfast last year. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. But I would I saw how divisive and how negative people were that were using religion to oh, yeah. fight for their political cause. Yeah. Now it's funny, I've spent a lot of time here talking about God and talking about religion and saying that, you know, I'm not I'm not embarrassed about my faith at all. But one thing that I have always tried to not really do, I want everyone to know I'm a Christian. I had somebody when I ran for when I when I when I ran for office, they sent me a message say, why do you have to tell everybody you're a Christian? You know, why this what's up why with this blatant, you know, uh uh, labeling of mm-hmm. of Christianity like it, it, it's, it makes it sound like everybody else is everybody else is is bad because we're not Christians. If I come before you on a, at a council meeting, um, are you gonna are you gonna you know treat me poorly because because I'm not a Christian? They so must, no, they must I'm gonna treat go you. With... I'm gonna treat you with fairness because I am a Christian. Yeah, that's how you should. That's how you should look at look at those things. But you know the divisiveness in this country. Honestly, I think God has taken His paw off of the United States. I think God gave us a great country. I think He created this country to show the world that if you live the way He created us, which is free, with freedom and with liberty, 
That's how we were created. People say, "Oh, Christianity, it's such a that's such a, you know." Well, well Satan runs Satan's got the world. Yeah. He he runs sure. freely among sure. the world. Everyone everyone yeah. knows that. Yeah. And I think the more time you give and people who are not focusing on what is good in the world yeah. and not focusing on God, yeah. you're going to see I mean Satan's working every day. Sure. Trust me. Working. Whenever 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 I have a thought, he of works a as hard as we let him work in the world. Oh yeah. And if whenever yeah. I have a thought of temptation, I know within the next day that temptation is going to be sure. available yeah. for me to take, and I have to work very hard. Yeah. And if that happens in our in our in our country and in our world all the time, and Satan's just constantly working yeah. at it for people to turn away, it's but just very one little step, one little step, one little step. That's all it is. And I think in yeah. politics, it's the same thing. It's very. I think it's very specific to our country because. God has blessed mm-hmm. this nation. That's well, why I believe in exceptionalism. God yeah. has blessed this nation. He created this country with the idea that if we treat each other, if we give each other freedom, and if we give each other that liberty, we will be happy and we will prosper. The further we get away from that idea, the worse our country gets. The more free we are, the better we get. The happier we are, the better our country is. We, well, God gave us and that that's freedom why, too. And you know, and, and back to the back to the slave the slavery issue and the, the I don't know we talked specifically about slavery, but people who like to uh, speak poorly of our nation or the the, the yeah, founding the, of our nation, yeah, which yeah, we were found, was a horrible the time. very first yeah. meeting, the very first continental convention, slavery ending slavery was discussed at that meeting. There was a fight over, there was a battle over it. Eighty years later, we were free. In mm-hmm. eighty years, now it sounds it sounds terrible to say, well. You had slavery for eighty years. Yeah, it's horrible. It's awful. It's mm-hmm. demonic. It's 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 sinful. But we attacked it, and we won that. Mm-hmm. You know, we we won that as a nation. Like we got rid of it, and and you know, I mean, which party was never, that? What's that? Which party was that? Yes, that was that was the Democrat Party who wanted to keep slavery. The Democrat wanted. Yeah. The Democrats wanted to keep slavery. But I don't want. Are yeah. You, are you sure? I'm absolutely. That doesn't wanted, seem pretty like sure. Correct. I'm pretty sure their party was was founded for that purpose. What about the KKK? Oh yeah, those were Democrats as well. What? Yeah, Jim Crow. You don't Democrats. say that, <laughs> do you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So listen, the Republicans have always Republicans have always been the party of freedom. We've always yes. been the party of law and order. We've always been the party of our founding documents. We've we're always, not trying to be dis- divisive, we, by the way. We're just it, being no. Honest we're just being truthful. realistic. Those are all absolutely yes, true things. That I'd be glad to debate anybody who thinks yeah. they're not true. Those are very true facts. Yeah. Period. So Republican Party has always been the party of freedom and law and order. We've always been the party of our founding documents. We've always been the party who understands that we have been blessed by God. And that we are to lead the way that he created us. We created this nation. And we need to get back to that. The further we get away from it, the worse it gets. We're not getting better. We keep introducing these things to say We have millions of babies being killed. We have yes. m- m- murders in every metropolitan area, mostly Democrat-ran areas. Murders in all these areas. Well, and, well, let's go with more. Let's talk about that real quick. Yeah. Mostly Democrat areas. But that's also the areas where there, there's more gun control. Because oh yeah, it's, it, it, what, what, who was it? Which group? The FBI did a study and yeah. and they did a guesstimate of over three million people's lives were saved. I believe it was three million people's lives were saved mm-hmm. um, either every year in the past couple of years for just brandishing a firearm, not yeah. using it, just brandishing yeah. a firearm. That would that would be saving them yeah. in in a dire situation where somebody was about to be robbed or carjacked, whatever it was. But in these Democrat run cities where you cannot own a either own a firearm or yeah. Their laws are so strict to where you can only have a certain type of firearm, and most people don't don't they think that they can't get one, so they won't even try. Yeah. And a lot of the, what are you gonna what are you gonna do if where if I'm a criminal, where am I gonna go rob people at? I'm gonna go rob yeah. people where they can't have guns. Yeah. Like there's there's a lot of situations with I mean even with schools that there's things that I certainly don't agree with and agree with, but yeah. we but, do everything. But a lot of those areas where a lot of crime happens can be also related back to a lack of gun ownership in those cities. Sure. Because, like, I feel more safer when, you know, I, I do have some weapons here. There's one, obviously, right in front of me. But I feel... It's a fine piece. It's a fine piece as yeah, well. We have another one. And we have another one as well. Yeah. But the, there's... I feel... I feel more putting my safety in my own hands and yeah. my wife putting her safety in her own hands yeah. while I'm away. And it's, it's a tool to yeah. use. It's very simple. People who commit crimes 
don't care if they're committing another crime. Exactly. It's not. It doesn't. It, it, Give us all it, your guns and yeah. the criminals too. It all they're like, man, logic. I'm gonna follow the yeah. law. For yeah. Once. It all. It all. Defi- it all defies logic. We yes. do the worst. When I say we, I mean Democrats. Actually, do the the most horrific things to the communities that they claim to care the most about. So, you they know, can, if, if we know that, it? if we know that, if we know that restricting gun rights actually causes more crime and murder, then why are we restricting people's gun rights? If 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 we if we know that, I'm trying. I'm that? trying to think of something to kind of like be more of an ad, like a devil's advocate on that part, but it's it's, it's such a logical be. thing yeah. to say. That's it's my, a founding it's, idea it's, for it's our such nation. A logical thing yeah. to say that it just blows my mind that people yeah. think otherwise. But I'm trying yeah. to think of so less guns, less crime. Let's look at Australia. Less guns, less gun crime. But also what more what Kate what boosted up ever since they did the gun buyback in what the nineties? What yeah. what increased dramatically? Stabbings and yeah. blunt objects being used in murders. So like yeah. if, if, if Archie Bunker, would it make you feel better if we threw people out of windows? Yeah, like it's yeah, like, so anyway, like to me yeah. it's Yes, you could do a gun buyback, listen, but yes, your gun crime is going to go down, but yeah. you're going to see stabbings listen, going up. You're going to see bludgeonings going it's up. It's our founding ideas oh, of yeah. our nation. And every time that I hear a Democrat tell me, they'll say something, they'll say like, that's very anti-American. Like, let, let's think about that for a minute. You want to change literally everything about our country, everything about our country. You want to change all of our laws of freedom, our freedom of speech, our freedom to protect ourselves. You want to protect our freedom to earn money, to keep things, to have private in, mm-hmm. you know, you know, income. You want to change everything about our country. I want to preserve it. Preserve it. Yet, but I'm anti-American? That's ridiculous. I mean, that's the most idiotic thing like I've I ever hear them say. It's like you're you're anti-American. Please explain. <laughs> you know, please explain, you know, like it, it's or or you're a bigot. <laughs> yeah. Or a bigot, racist. Yeah. There's they use words that I don't know what they are. <laughs> Honestly, I don't a bigot. Uh, I'm not even is kidding. Close to a maggot and to and me, maybe so maybe I'm wrong. Like, I, yeah, you know, I mean, like I said, I was I had my college education was a hobby. It was really for fun. <laughs> so, yeah, I did this, I didn't work real person. hard <laughs> on understanding definitions of words like misogynistic. Or, that's a big one. <laughs> it's a, I think that like, means that you you're think, getting a massage. Uh, that's what I thought at first. I'm like, <laughs> I think we're being well, misogynistic. I would like a massage. I think we're being and, misogynistic by saying that. I well, you're right. Um, yeah. I don't know. Misogynistic Listen, sounds like it's more of a uh, like yeah. a manly sexist yeah. thing. That's what it sounds yeah. like. Listen, I should look that definition yeah. up, but I really don't care because yeah. I'm not misogynistic. No, I'm not. <laughs> so I, I don't, don't know. care. I'm just a regular, plain old American. A, I'm no, a regular you say American. Cis male. You're yeah. a cis male. You I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm just a regular, plain old American. I know. Yeah. You know. You hear this stuff all the time. All these really divisive things. Look. You know. I was in. I was in D.C. Yeah. So I was out there for yeah. rally. Yeah. Which was, I mean, you know, terrible events. You know, that took place uh, in something that was a big great awesome event there were some really terrible things that came from it but well, well with that with that real quick there was a large a large amount of people but like with the black lives matter movement it, maybe on, but, it was the same as that but hang on no here's here's Whoa. here's the difference oh i will tell you the thing that the, the folks i was there with that we noticed and that we were so proud of because i don't do protest i'm not a protester no i'm a i'm i go to celebrations i don't go to protests so uh for me going to washington I wanted to just be another body in Washington or two bodies in Washington (laughs) um, saying, I'm not happy with this election because it's fraudulent. Not because my guy didn't win. I've had my guy. I came. I remember I literally cried from downtown at Conseco when uh, when uh, I'm not getting choked up. My belly's grumbling. I haven't eaten. (laughs) I cried when Obama won. I literally cried. Out of I cried from Conseco all the way down. Oh, sadness. Oh, sadness. Sadness. I knew what he was going to do. I knew what he was going to do to this country. I told everybody. I'm like, y'all are crazy. Y'all think you, you want to be hip. You, you want to be cool. You know, yeah. you, you want to be cool. And you you, you know, you want to elect this guy that people, you know what the funny thing is? It's the people who say that Barack Obama's cool and hip. How so? That dude's a dork. He's, when, he's the, the way dorkiest. He talks, the way he talks is oh. very. He's a, he's a pan. Can I say pansy? Does that offend say, anybody? He's a pansy. Know. He's a he's a dork. He's a dorky dude. Now I remember in high and school, he's, a pansy. he's wanted, not a cool guy. I wanted him to win presidency, and I remember the kids around me in school saying, "Well, yeah. we need a." And I remember our teachers saying it. We need a black president. 
I'm like, well, if we need a black president, we need a black president. No, like, we need a great president. Need, and I don't care what color they are. I could that's care something less I learned what color afterwards. president is. Like, if we're going yeah. off of just straight straight up yeah. ethnicity on somebody, I don't care what color the person is. Whoever's the best fit for the job. Yeah. I don't care what color he is. I want a is. great president I want a who great loves black. America, who stands up for Americans, who is brilliant, and who has a history of success. Simple as that. That's what I want. I don't. I don't care. I don't care who he or she or I don't care. I don't what if care they identify they as something different other than a male or female? Then they're. <laughs> <laughs> I want someone who's confident in knowing exactly who God created. That's it. I mean, yeah. I want someone who's confident in knowing who God created. That's it. There's your answer. So I want the best person for that job. You know who I want to do my plumbing? The best plumber. That is, you know what? Yeah, that was a good. That was a yeah. good, a good yeah. example. Somebody brought to me one day because yeah. I was talking to them about it, and they said, "Well, let's look at it as a fact of either a plumber or an electrician. Do you want somebody based on just their ethnicity?" I'm like, "No, that's stupid. I want the best plumber or electrician that's going to yeah. come here. I don't care what yeah. he looks like or yeah, what color they are, if it's a she. Yeah. I don't care." And they're like, "Okay, exactly. This is what this, yeah, this is what this party is proposing. They want just either just this ethnicity of person." It's like that's pretty stupid. Oh, I did a, I did a, I did a paper on, I did a paper on affirmative action in law schools. Oh, and, yeah. And and oh my, I, I, my professor, I thought she was going to pass out. I thought she was going to have a seizure. I didn't know what was going to happen. She lost her mind because it was a presentation as well, yeah. you know. So oh, yeah, that's she's great. like, "Do you really expect to talk about affirmative action in law school in my classroom?" <laughs> you know, and I was like, "Yes." Is that how she talked? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> Only. Way more annoying, <laughs> and uh, and I said yes, yes I do. I I am going to talk about that today, and uh, and she was very uncomfortable about it. And I'm like, hey, we're just going to listen. the The name of the website that I'm going to use a lot here is called LawSchoolNumbers.com, and you you go to if you go to LawSchoolNumbers.com, you you can see who was who. There's little graphs for each school, Ivy League schools, all schools, who was accepted, waitlisted, rejected. And so, you know, if you look at some of the, you look at the people who were accepted with the, with really go to the lowest GPAs and the lowest uh, LSAT scores of people who were accepted, it was minorities. And if you go to the, if you go to that, actually I'll back, that's not necessarily true. There were, there were minorities at the top too. A lot of more Asian minorities. The Asian minorities. Who are, were rejected are, oh, yeah, with the highest, smart. with the highest LSATs. Well, because they have the, a, a more... Honestly, they have a, a better education mm-hmm. and a better chance of education. And they have, I want to back up to the teacher thing. I do not blame all of our bad education on teachers. I don't. Again, I think we have a lot of really great teachers who oh, are do. incredibly underpaid and mm-hmm. need to be need to be making more money. I want to make sure that you understand. But it doesn't come Great it doesn't teachers come deserve more money, especially in this state. Yes. And I can tell you, nobody would ever fight for you as uh, to get that money as hard as this guy right here. If you're a great teacher, I'm your best friend. And the biggest thing, it but, doesn't, it, that money won't come from just raising taxes. That money comes from real ca- reallocating money in the system yeah. that they use and abuse for a lot of things yeah. to the teachers that actually deserve it. So back to that, you know, you got these, the folks who are rejected up here, mm-hmm. and you got the folks who are accepted down here. Now, you know, in the Constitution, you know, we have a right to a pauper attorney. Now, let's just say for a moment that. You're accepted into college because of the color of your skin, or or your gender, you know, and not the contents of your. Which character. there are only two. <laughs> there are only Quoting two Martin Luther King Jr. over here. Yeah, yeah. So if you're accepted into college because of that, and not because you you deserve to be there or you've earned it or you're the best, you know, and and you've earned that seat. What about the guy who is? Let's say that you are you are falsely accused of of murder. And you're going on trial for murder. You can't afford an attorney. And one has appointed you. And you got you have a public defender. And let's say that you learned that that public defender is not the best, but they were in law. Do you want the best to defend you? Or do you want to be defended by someone well, who was accepted into the law school because, you know, she was, you know, born out of some luck of a particular color? Well, Jay, my answer would be I would probably want the best. The best, yeah, absolutely. I probably want the best. Yeah, we want the best. We, I think yeah. we want the best in everything we do. But we keep lying to people and telling them, you can't do this. You're not good enough. The cards are stacked against you. You know, in, in, in a hiring situation, I have never seen or met an employer who would not want to hire the best person for that position. Who says, you know, who says, well, 
that guy's got purple Chuck Taylors on. He's my guy. Like, what? Did you look at his resume? Don't need to. Purple Chucks. <laughs> it's crazy, right? I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. So I come from the place that says, I don't care what color you are. I don't care what gender you are. You all have exactly the same opportunity to do these things. And I wholeheartedly believe that everybody does. And what we're talking about with inequality, we're really talking about poverty. Poverty is really the line that's drawn. And we've drawn a line in this country with poverty where it's hard to break through that, through that, through now, poverty. It's hard to break out because we're creating this gap. We're creating so that gap. So to quickly talk government. on poverty, I remember yeah. I had this talk while at work one day with a guy who I believe he's from Seattle. As soon as I say where he's from, he'll know who he is if he's watching. I highly doubt it. I'll share this if you want. Um, is from Sa Seattle, I believe. And we had a discussion on poverty. We had a discussion on Medicare, and then and we had a discussion on uh, insurance and medical insurance for people, and yeah. then having universal health care and all that stuff. And yeah. I, I'm against that because that's when you don't have companies competing for it for a better product. But we talked about poverty, competition, and, and yeah, you want competition in education for teachers. Yes. Competition, competition is always the answer to make something better. It's a really good thing because yeah. I, if I didn't have any competition with yeah. anything that I do in my life, I yeah. honestly would not want to be better. Somebody I actually asked me, said, better. "Do we really want teachers competing against each other? Is that really?" What we want. Yes, I believe. In yes, it. I, I believe absolutely it should be in almost want every that. field. Yeah, in anything you do, yeah. you should be competing in the exactly. And, and if you're if you're at a job where and I, I'm not going to say too much, but there are jobs out there where you don't have to compete anymore once you get hired, and yeah. it shows. That's right. And you're stuck there. And, 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 taxpayers, and are, taxpayers have and, to pay for that. Exactly. <laughs> I'm very different on things. Maybe it's because I'm young and stupid. I don't know. Yeah. But we talked about in Seattle. How much do you want to bet that some of my haters out there take little clips and excerpts of this? Actually, I really like, hope so. <laughs> Jay, 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 Jay hates teachers, and he doesn't like... Oh, I hope so, because then I'll just point them to watching the whole video, which like I could finally get somebody to watch the entire he thing. He only wants the Volkswagen <laughs> Audis. <laughs> he only wants the Audis. Audi TT. He only wants the Audis. He doesn't like the Jettas. Well, you know what? You don't need yeah. a Jetta. Did you hear him? Yeah, did, you, did you hear the way he didn't talk about Jettas? <laughs> It's more of like the Priuses, I'd imagine. Yeah. But with people that, so we talked about we talked Cuckoo. about um, <laughs> the poor the poor situations out in Seattle, yeah. and we talked about like not just wage gaps. We we could get it. That's a whole yeah. other discussion. But we talked about there's the poor people class. in Seattle where they've created all these wonderful jobs. Exactly. And we talked about that, and he said, and "Well, more money needs to go towards these poor um, cities." And lower income. And I said, I can agree to a point. I can agree to a point. Giving money to people will not solve it. Giving money no. away that, that doesn't teach not. any building aspects yeah. of, a, of an interpersonal skill, of trying to achieve something, setting mm -hmm. a goal and achieving it. I think there yeah. needs to be better education in those places. Because if you have better education, not just throwing money at education, better education, these people in lower income cities can learn on new on new aspects of life. They can learn about like business classes and they can finally learn to say, hey, I can have the I have the confidence now to go out to the world to conquer it. I don't have to keep doing the same things I'm doing. I don't have to do all these these things going into a low income job. I can sure. do better. That's and right. then going there but throwing money at the problem isn't always the answer. Yeah. You have it to takes, give you have to give young people the confidence to go out and better their lives. You have to give them the confidence. You have to tell them that you can do this. Mm -hmm. I'm an example. You can make it. You can do this. And it's pretty easy too. You just watch somebody else and do what they did. And people say, well, they everyone doesn't have those opportunities. I didn't have those opportunities. Lots of well, people come what? out of but you know what? Again, I didn't and, and honestly I didn't have like a giant team around me saying, come on Jay, you can do it, buddy. In fact, I did have some people around me who said you can't do it. You can't do it. Or they expected me not to. They expected me to fail. They expected me to, you know, uh, to never find success. That's what they expected. I said, uh, I, f I consider that a challenge. Mm -hmm. And I just said, yeah, I, you know how I know I can do it? Because I see all these other people doing it. And, and they can do it too. And that's my message. You know, I used to, I used to, I used to talk to inner city kids. I used to go, I had a friend that worked at Goodwill Industries School downtown, his charter school. And there was some really kids who were in deep, deep trouble who came from inner city. They were tough kids. They were, and I'll tell you what, they were super smart kids who had been told that they weren't. 
they, they now they weren't they may not they may not have been properly educated, but they had been told and lied to that they were worthless. They're never going to amount to anything. They can't do anything. So that it's easier, you know, it's easier to sell drugs. It's easier to do these things than it is to do things, you know. It's all of that quick, the quick satisfaction. I would always tell them the opposite. I would it's say, always the quick listen, satisfaction. if you guys want to sit here and you want to do that, listen, if, yeah, if you are happy selling drugs, looking over your shoulder every time a police car yeah. comes by or looking over your shoulder, one of your, one of your, you know, enemies comes by. Every, if you're always, if you're happy with that, if it makes you feel good, please continue on, continue on, go ahead and do it. But if you would like to have a, a life of peace, um, peace comes with hard work. Peace is just not like some like magic dust that gets sprinkled across the United States. It also helps when you're when you're trying to live a, a live a life of Christ. If you're trying to live oh, yeah, a life yeah. closer yeah. to God, yeah. you'll see the, you'll see that kind of stuff, that, yeah. little, that illegal activity or whatever it is. You're going to be like, this is not honoring God. I need to go honor God. And then you're going to want to do better for yourself. How are you doing? We, still, we still got a couple more minutes. Uh, well, listen, we it's at one thirty. So, you know, I wanted to address, you know, we, we talked a little bit. We, we touched on D.C. We didn't really talk a whole lot about it. But, you know, like I said, went out there. was another body there. Yeah. Went there. was a group of people. What happened in the Capitol? Is is terrible. It should not have happened. And and to be honest, we're not sure of the facts of all that. I will say this for sure. For sure, there were people invited into the state capitol. No question. And they were invited in by the Capitol Police. There's videos of it everywhere. If big tech would stop knocking them off, you could see all those things. Mm -hmm. There's videos of it. People were invited into the building. There were fights in the building. I don't think that we know the full story on that. I, honestly, um, I don't care what the full story is. No, nobody should have lost their life in that building. Certainly not a police officer. Nobody should have lost their lives in that in that building. Um, quite frankly, nobody should have been in the building. Yeah. But listen, the people were there. The people who were invited into the building, I, I'm not. I, there's no way we can blame those people who were invited in the building. There's video of people mm -hmm. literally being patted on the back. I Taking saw selfies it. with CCP officers. I saw. Listen, yeah. I can tell you that I saw m m many. Um, Capitol Police walk off. I'm not blaming them. I'm not saying why or what. I'm saying there were a lot who left um, and not only left, but there were some there who were literally inviting people into the building. And so that is a very tough situation where you have people coming from one entrance where they're invited in, they get in the building, and now there's a combative situation to get them out. And again, I am not in any way condoning anything violent that happened in that building. But I do want to explain to people, there was clearly some chaotic things happening there. We were way down in front, you know, away from all of that. But you could see what was happening. You could see people coming out of the building. And certainly when you, when, when you, look, at the, when you look at the video, I mean, it's a video. It doesn't lie. It shows exactly what is happening. So a lot of confusing things there. But listen, Republicans... Republicans, the people who were at that march, this it wasn't really a march, it was a rally. And the people who were there, there were millions of people of every color. It was an absolute perfect cross-section of this country. There was black, brown, every color you could imagine. There were, uh, one thing I remembered a lot, there were thousands and thousands of anti-communist Chinese people everywhere handing out their stuff. I mean, if you think communism is great, talk to the people who have lived with communism. Yeah. Talk to Cubans who are I would Republicans love, I would love now. to have somebody from Communist but, China that was there that came here. I'd yeah. love to have somebody on. Oh, man. I, talk, I spoke with one for quite a while there. But there was, when I walked down Pennsylvania Avenue, I was hugging and walking with a, a, a black man in his 20s and, a, and, a, and a, 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 a white woman in her 60s right, ne right next to us. I mean, it was, a, I'm telling you, a perfect cross section. So all these people, like the bunch of angry white men. There were number one. There were tons of women. I saw a news article tons that said of women. mostly white people. That's what the it's news article America. said. America. Go to a, that news hey, article. I'm like, that's hey, a divisive go to a, title. Go to, a, go to a Colts game. It's mostly white people. Yeah. Go to pretty much any event. Go to the Indianapolis 500. Go to anything. It's mostly white people. Of course. That comes but down I'm to telling that, you. That part comes down to the media just listen, trying to divide. One of my and one of my friends on social media. I look later and I saw that like he was in fact there. And and he's he's a he's a brilliant black conservative like funny super funny little way more foul mouth than I am oh. but he's really funny but he was there and I happened to see him one of my videos like he was there and I sent him the video but like 
it, there was, I mean, everyone from, I mean, I, I don't, it was just a great cross section of America. That's awesome. And the event started out, it was very happy. And, and quite frankly, for the people who were not involved in any of the combative behavior, the violence, which I'm not, I'm not entirely sure the people from the rally were the people inside being violent. In fact, I nobody at the rally that that marched from where the rally was, which was huge. And anyone who says it's a hundred thousand people, that's insane. I've I've my shop was on Gasoline Alley. I was a I know the Indianapolis Five Hundred very 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 well. Been to many of them. That's a lot of people. This was this dwarfed the Indy Five Hundred. Which is over like four hundred thousand people in five hundred. Yeah. So I if, mean, this if was. If you're going to say those, it's people over that, a million people. There were the over a million people were, there, in my opinion. That were inside the Capitol building, and you're saying there's over five hundred thousand people out in that area. How do you know that like one or two of them, maybe three, four, five, ten? I don't know. Could have been into the Capitol. They building. absolutely could have been. I mean, listen. Yeah. I they, just want to rule. I they, just want to rule all that out. Oh, too. absolutely. Yeah. No, there absolutely could. Mm -hmm. And you know what? And I think that we do need to look at this. But to say that Donald Trump was inciting violence. The people who have incited violence are the people who have been sent to Washington to do a job, and they are not doing that job. And they're not only not doing that job, they're working against the people, they're lying to the people, they're stealing the people's money, they're squandering the entire country and selling it off to the highest bidder in China. That's what's happening in that country. And, and that is what is, in, and again, I am not condoning violence. I'm saying the people who were violent, this is why they're violent. There's some other theories, too, that... Other groups, other crowds, other agencies may have been involved in just to make our crowd look bad. When I say our crowd, it is our crowd. It's my crowd. And when we were there, the rally, the people who were at the rally, it was everyone was hugging, high-fiving, smiling, laughing. It was a wonderful time down there. What happened inside that building they, was unbelievable. They definitely had, when they've done some arrests, there's some investigations done that I've seen a lot yeah. on the internet about there's there's some QAnon people there, which those are conspiracy oh, theories. The there guy was, in the horns. There was, yeah, the guy Like, come on, horns. I mean, like, that's not... There was, there was supposed yeah. Antifa there. Sure. There was people calling it out. There was... Yeah. There's there's pictures that were taken on the inside of the building, and people just, inside of the house, yeah, and, and you hit it. a fist. There's and plenty of people there's, who there's showed up there. People that are there from all sure. different angles. The fact yeah. of it is, is they got in, yeah. and they that's right. They they broke. Some of them broke into the building. Some were invited in, like you said. But yeah. there there was people that broke into the building, Here, which I don't care. I think it was incredibly understaffed. That's why a it lot was, of those capital that policemen comes were down, leaving. That they comes were leaving down to, because they're looking down the street at millions of people who are walking in. For me, I, I can tell you right now, I would have been like, um, they were not equipped for that at no. all. But that I also mean, comes and, down and, to the, the mayor of that city. Oh, absolutely. She, why, there, was Pennsylvania was Avenue, in, why was Pennsylvania Avenue shut down? Why was it closed? If the mayor mm -hmm. doesn't like Donald Trump, why did the mayor allow people to march down that street? Why wasn't, why mm -hmm. wasn't there police at every single intersection well, stopping people and saying, you can't come this you way? You can look up. There's an, there was artic, there's articles done on it about the, yeah. the Democrat mayor in that city. Yeah. She intentionally made sure that officers didn't have the, the yeah. as many weapons as they should have had. Oh, yeah. They, she intentionally understaffed them. There yeah. was, I believe, six call six requests if to I'm a, increase If, if I'm a cop there, there, I would be furious. Yeah. There was they they put them in the worst position officers. that they could ever be in. Yeah. They put them in the worst position they could ever be in, and they were a pawn in a political game. Mm -hmm. Which is a horrible Which, quite frankly, do. is bullshit. Yeah. It's bullshit, and nobody cared. Nobody thought about that. No, they thought about it. They just, they just, they, they didn't, they, they wanted they, it. To it be was a well way. thought out thing sure. for them to do that, which it, here's the, here's what blows my mind. Another, Tim Cast, Tim Pool brought this up real quick. I'll make this really quick and then we'll have to go to an ending. Yeah. But Tim Cast, Tim Pool brought this up and he said that it was well thought out because the Democrats run the defund the police um, motto. They yeah. want to defund the police. So what would be something that would be worse for the Democrats to increase police power and let's say one of those officers kills somebody? Yeah. If they increase police power, they're no longer for defund the police. Yeah. They are... I think they're also trying to show the other Democrats and, and far leftists on that side, hey, we're about to defund the police, you know, yeah. having social workers going in instead yeah. of police officers. Sure. That failed. Mm -hmm. It just showed that it just failed. Yeah. You cannot just defund the police. I believe yeah. they were trying to also make a point with that. Well, the people who love the police the most and want the police funded more and train and, and, and have more training, the people who want that more than anyone in this nation were the people in the rally. 
were the people who supported the people who've supported the president all along. So the people who are in the building being being violent, they clearly do not get the president's message, and they clearly do not get the message of the Republican Party. I can tell you that right now. It does not abide by our platform, period, because we stand by the Constitution, uphold the Constitution, and want America to continue on as it was founded, as it was founded. You know, and when you say that, of course, people are like, oh, he wants slavery. Like, I don't even know. I don't even know what to say to, to say to these people. The 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 and and keep in mind again, like I said, um, ending slavery was a was a founding idea of our country. Mm-hmm. Period. That is a fact. You know, actually getting it done took a long time. It was a founding idea. That's on record. It is a fact of our nation. Founding idea. No question about yeah. it. But and listen, but the DC thing overall, the a mil, at least a million people showed up there with great hearts, with great ideas, and they were there for the right reason. There's a small group of people, just like I said about just like I said about Republicans. There's a small group of people. There's millions of Republicans. It's a very small group of people who we don't like. So people keep saying, we need to, we need to form our own party. We need whatever. That's not going to do anything. You're going to have the same amount of people voting. If you want to change things, show up on primary election day because that's the day when you have the most choice. That's the day where the two people who are most different are, are competing for, for, with their ideas for your vote. That day, in that election... By the time you get to the general election, the two people come so much closer together, they become one. They become one. They become the people who want to self-preserve. They come to to be the people who want to please, you know, they want to please everybody. Well, guess what? Everybody's not right. Everybody's not right. And and you and, and if you want if you want to do something better, remember this. Remember this. Republicans start out right here on the to the right. They shift to the left once they're elected. Every single time they shift to the left. Sometimes it's a little bit, sometimes it's a lot. But remember, they shift to the left. So start with the strongest Republican you can find if you want to have a good Republican. The strongest Republican you can find. Start with that. And you can only do that in a primary election. Remember that. Show up on the primaries, get new people in. We need term limits. I'm a huge supporter of term limits. We need term limits. Within reason, we need term limits. Well, I think that is a good place to end. Don't you? I mean, it's, it's not really the greatest place, but the camera's about to die. I think so it's a great, I think it's it's, great it's place. It's a good, to good place to end for today. I, yeah, I think there's a lot more conversation. Oh, there's a ton more conversation. About, have about DC. There's a ton. I wish and I had a longer camera. My heart goes out to the people yeah. who have lost their lives over that. It should not have happened. And I don't want to just continuously say it's this person's fault, that person's fault. To be honest, I don't think we really know whose fault it is right now, but to blame the president for it is ridiculous. That's stupid. And to blame a bunch of peaceful, uh, happy people uh, who were on a positive mission, to blame them for the actions of a, of a few bad people is is, is also ridiculous. It, it's ridiculous. It is. Blame the people who are responsible for it. Their, that would make their sense. Their own actions. Yeah. <laughs> that would make sense. So, well, we're going to go ahead and close here for this time. Yeah. Jay, thank you so much for coming on, man. I had... I had a lot of fun, and I really hope that you come back for another episode. That'd be I, great. Yeah. I, I, if, um, yeah, if you don't, uh, if they don't, I don't think know, any throw happen. rotten tomatoes at you over this. Yeah. Well, if they're rotten, that's you're the a brave worst part. man having me on your show. Oh, you know what, man? You know, I've been known to be brave sometimes. <laughs> so, thank you so much for sticking through the entire video. I know that they get long. I've had complaints about it, but I don't care. Uh, you have a short attention span, and you need to learn how to have better time management. Isn't he great? Oh, isn't he great? Oh no, no like I watched the episodes that. before I got here. Hey, and, thank and you. I watch I watched all the episodes for, and they're awesome. I, I really you do such a great that. great job. I really work. I'm going to be your worst one. That's all right. <laughs> I think my worst one was my first one with my brother. No, that yeah. was a great. I've, I'm, I'm yeah. I've really enjoyed doing all of these. Yeah. So if anybody, you have any have any uh, questions, you have any comments or concerns, anything you like don't like about the video, tell me what you think of Jay's opinions. Tell me if you think he's right. <laughs> tell me if you think he's an idiot. I don't care. Also, yeah. uh, please like, comment, and subscribe on the YouTube channel. It really helps me out. And share this video. Share it with your friends and family. I understand I'm not even that big at all, but it really helps out if more people get to see this and just give me some advice on what you what you want to see done. So, he's doing a great job. He has a warm heart, and he's invited people from both sides on. I appreciate that. Sh- spread it. Share this around. We, we, I appreciate we that. This. Well, thank you so much for being yeah. on, and uh, hopefully have you on soon.
All right, thank you. God bless America. <laughs> That's right. Amen. Yeah.